What's going on, everybody? It is Jordan with Conquer Trading and Investing. Great morning to you all. Looking forward to this another another beautiful day. We are absolutely blessed, and I am grateful to be here with each and every one of you this morning as we take a look at what's going on in the markets. Put the great puzzle together, together. We got some new moderators this morning in the chat room. Wes and Cameron have stepped up over here helping out. Do appreciate that. Entirely grateful for it. We're going to start over here with the S&P 500. Before we do, a couple of things. Brandon has been giving just, not only Brandon, Alan, um, Keith, have been giving wonderful, wonderful, wonderful insight inside the Telegram group. Brandon here has a channel if you're interested in crypto, in not only some of particular projects like Cardano, explaining them what they are, Chainlink. This channel is better than any other crypto channel you're going to find. I definitely, it's in the description below. I'm going to go ahead and add the link over there, but you can find it in the description. And this is Heath's Trader Talk. A big focus on the currency markets, a big compliment to everything that we do together. I'm going to include this channel as well. This is Heath, and you could go ahead in the description below, find both those links. Definitely, definitely both of them. Important follows. Alan doesn't have a channel yet, but he will. Alan has gone ahead this morning and was sharing uh, this graph here of the S&P 500. I want to focus. Look, he's got the prime trend lines over here in light blue. So watch over here. We'll come back to this one in a second. I want to focus on this trend line he's added over here, this yellow one over here, connecting this point over here to our recent high in September. And you can see that price right now is flirting with that resistance right over there. This is great for awareness of where we are. If we are able to break above this leg over here, I think then we're targeting the top area of this prime trend line over here that's cloned connecting these two points, going up further. That seems to me that I would be targeting somewhere around 4,100. Where was the first Where was the first time you heard that number, right? Do you remember back on this channel back in April? And I said very bluntly, I have no idea what happens from here if we go down, if we go up to 4,100 or back down towards 20, 2,200 or 2,500. Who knows what I said, but it's on the videos back in April. Look, 4,100 all of a sudden, it seems like it comes into play. If we do break out over here, that would be very, very interesting. Bitcoin this morning. Ah, oh, now let's check out what's going on there. So that's the good perspective of the S&P 500 of where we are, right? You can see that we're currently right into that resistance. Allen's added over here, connecting these two points over there. And then you could see that we've been caught up over there. If we break above, that should set up a whole new leg on the equity markets, Makes a lot of sense here ahead of what 2021, the year that matched 2020 in the amount of liquidity provided. So what else? NASDAQ, uh, similar, similar, similar structure. NASDAQ here is getting ready to try to close. Did it close yesterday at all-time highs? I think just under today, it's looking to try to close at new all-time highs. And then the Dow, remember, the only thing we're watching here is for the downside, the canary. If we break this little trend line from this upward sloping channel, that would be an opportunity to begin watching for the downside. And look over here at the Russell. Remember, we added in this bull flag after it became clear what was developing. Entirely bullish all across the equity markets. Now, before we go any further, just uh, so J Jordan, why, why are you not so focused on the equity markets, right? What's happening right now? What's happening right now, right? What do you have happening here? The dollar taking out our target of 90, uh, 83. Look at that, blowing past it. Look at that. So, and the dollar is now headed towards what, right? Is it pot? Not yet. We're still into this little bit area of, of resistance, therefore support. It's right where we are right now or coming into. We're not even there yet, but you can see a little bit lower is really where we're going to come in down into this whole area of, of support. If we are able to break through into this area of noise over there, we could be targeting much lower, the two-year low down at 88.40. The reason I'm bringing up the dollar when I talk about equities here is because what we are seeing, we've seen this year in 2020, a 20% increase 
in the monetary in the in the max supply of the U.S. dollar. Talk about a coin. Now nah, it's crazy, but it's true, right? And you're seeing stocks rise by that order of ma magnitude. Also, remember Jeff Bezos' wealth has increased infinitely, almost right this year. That was on the back of what of of the enormous uh, expansion of the Fed's balance sheet. And then you see Amazon being repriced. Is it that Amazon is becoming more valuable or that the currency it's priced in is becoming less and the purchase power is dwindling? If you look at stocks versus gold, you can see actually the stock market's value is declining. So that's really interesting to think about right there. If you're invested in stocks and you feel like, oh, they're going up and I'm making money, you really have to determine whether or not, are you? Is that the best way? For you to position yourself, you remember what happened in Venezuela as the as the economy went to absolute crud, right? The stock market continued to print new all time highs. So what else? We got we got Bitcoin. Let's let's talk about Bitcoin for one second over here. Trading up above. I'm gonna remove this blue box over here now because this hot zone box, right? That was after the new all time high. That's what I was looking for when I was looking between 18,000 and 21,000 for our first pullback. Well, the pullback's over. I'm not saying we can't go back down, but we are making higher highs over there. That pullback is over. That's gone from my whole, let's say, uh, guess the thesis, you know, of where I was expecting that first pullback. It was less than I expected. It was only it was only half the distance I expected. Right. And here we are going up. I'm looking at us trading up potentially higher from over here. I'm removing that little bit of area of caution as we're now making room. Now, that being said, you all know still that we're not out of the woods or anything like that, or that from here we couldn't trade down 30%. Just always be aware that we could trade down 30% from where we are, only that if you're looking to scale in further your position. And I do think for me personally, that right now, I, I mean, I, when I say I want to be fully positioned or more, meaning under 20,000 here, I want to own every single Bitcoin that was is within my strategy for this bull market phase, right? Now, so does that mean if we pull back further that I would add to my position? No, I'm already fully positioned. I don't need to do that. What happens if we trade up to 30,000 and then trade back down maybe to like 22, 24,000? Would I add? Maybe I don't need to to achieve anything I want to achieve right now. Sitting pretty, just watching over here to see what happens next. Ethereum is trading up nicely today, and if we we're gonna look at first the second over here, uh, uh this is actually uh, a bass. I guess it's all coins, right? Versus Bitcoin, and Alan also shared this shared this this morning, and this is what I want you to focus on this land right right here of support where my mouse is touching over here. This is an area of support which Bitcoin busted through and you can see has now reversed above, taking back that broken support, didn't even hold as resistance, but is being confirmed now on this side of support. If alts rise out of over here, this should be just another indication that alt season is upon us. Not only that, this is the, this is the moment here on, on alts, I believe. So watch what happens here. We were looking at this trade, Ethereum, Bitcoin yesterday, talking about how it looked really nice, right? It looks at, as far as looking around, it's in my opinion, one of the better trades that I see, all right? It's one of the better trades that I see. And uh, you could see over here since yesterday when we, we brought it to uh, our attention, you know, really looking in as we were seeing that downward sloping, the consolidation, we're breaking out now to the upside. Now, there is a, there are some uh, nuances that are different between trading uh, FX and, betray, and trading altcoins, whereas altcoins do tend to break out. Uh, and although you could do conquering the markets all day long, you could get the breakout, the retest, and the resumption. And those are still high probability trades. You do tend to get on, on all coins, more clean breakouts. Be aware, there's nothing wrong with taking them. Just always make sure the first thing you're doing, because everyone's focused in on entries, I, I carry much more weight to where my stop loss is and where I'm placing that, right? The entry is fine. That's like that's just like a layup in basketball. It's no big deal. But you want to really make sure that every trade you enter, you're focused in on where your stop loss is and you're and you're developing your position side around that one fact. Now, 
Uh, before we get going, uh, not that we haven't got going, we're already on our way. Obviously, I want to look at gold, silver. Uh, check in just really briefly at w WTI, and you can see that's just a beautiful bull flag right now, right? Beautiful bull flag, fake breakdown over there. Um, uh, yesterday, I was mentioning uh, BlockFi. One of my closest friends in the world ca called me up after after listening to the show, and you know, was wondering, do, do you use BlockFi? What's going on? You trust BlockFi? And the truth is, yeah, I, I have uh, you know a significant amount of, of Bitcoin over there. I like the 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 fact that you could whitelist an address, right? What does that mean? If you if you don't put any address under your whitelist in BlockFi, that means no one can make a transfer from your account for at least one week, right? So you you also have things like obviously everyone you know password security, and then you have some type of two factor author, uh, authorization. Uh, I f I do not only on BlockFi on other exchanges. I also hold coins with similar security, right? Uh, and then of course offline. Now one of the advantages of BlockFi is not only that they are paying you interest on your holdings but that you could borrow against your holdings. And I have done that a couple of times between 12,000 and 20,000, actually actually borrowed against my current holdings on BlockFi, and then I purchased more Bitcoin. So I use them, I think of them as like banking 2.0. I could see myself using them a lot more than uh, my, you know, Chase Manhattan Bank or things like that. I'm into this credit card. Look at that. It's a good looking card over here. This is coming out soon. I'm already on the waiting list myself. Yeah, it's nice to get 1.5 back in Bitcoin, or, although that sounds like to me like an accounting headache. You know, I'm not really jazzed about that piece, but that's a cool looking card over here. It's a cool looking card. I want that. Also, the Fold app, I'm not on the waiting list yet. They just started sending out their cards. I'm also interested in that. I think Fold uh, pays a little bit more. I'm going to have to compare those. But I am interested. Celsius, right? Celsius is another one to also definitely consider. Now, they have their own native token, right? Uh, but they are... So BlockFi, the reason I like BlockFi, by the way... <laughs> the. The, the reason I like I like BlockFi, by the way, is because it's a it's a VC play, it's a venture capital play. They've already raised three rounds. The last round, by the way, raising fifty million dollars, led by Anthony Pompolano and uh, Morgan Digital. We also have the Winklevoss brothers as investors over there, and venture venture plays have a lot of money behind them, which is why I'm all about that, and I like that. Now Celsius is also a huge network lending platform that has kind of done it themselves uh, off the back of their own token. And that's definitely also one to uh, consider. If you're not using their token, though, the, the rates are very, very high. Uh, no, BlockFi is not for trading. It's not for, for trading at all. It's for holding. It's for making uh, investments into Bitcoin uh, and then using it as, you know, a, a better a better means than than traditional finance. Let's take a look over here at gold coming into the look at gold looks so nice. So nice. So nice. But it's coming into strong resistance right over there at 1848. Uh, when I say it looks so nice to me, uh, it's just showing signs of life. I don't yet like this from a swing traders perspective. It's still got a lot to prove over here. Uh, bargain hunters won. I wish I had been one of them. This is where I looked to see if we could make a stand over here. That was rejected. We fell back down and I stayed away and I'm still staying away. But watch over here right now as you're into this bit of because if you think gold is the trade right now, I think you're missing the I think you're missing the whole point of the markets. How about that? If you think gold or silver is the play right now, I think you're seriously under, uh, misunderstanding the state of the current markets. But that's fine, you know. That's fine. Uh, also came up, you know, someone was like, Jordan, you said you bought a bunch of physical gold and silver uh, 10 years ago. That's dangerous to hold at your house. Listen, guys, if you're holding gold and you and you hold it at your house, that defeats the whole purpose of owning. You cannot hold it in the country you live in. Otherwise, you're defeating the purpose of the purpose of gold. All right. So look, there are plenty. Gold money, right, is a great service. Mike Maloney, I, you know, yeah, have you ever seen his work, his playlist on uh, money, on currency? It's fantastic. 
It makes for better watching than any Netflix series. Do check out Mike Maloney Gold Money, but his his Gold Money, his service, I, I support Mike, I use it. They have different vaults around the world that you could use. It's not just there. It doesn't stop there. I mean, hey, listen, even if you want to go with Peter Schiff, right, and, and uh, you know, Pacific Holdings or whatever, whatever the, the shill is shilling, right, that's fine. That's an option. I never used him, nor, nor would I. There are other services you could use. But do make sure that you are keeping any precious metals you own in a vault and out of country. Look into this stuff now why things are still, let's say, copacetic, right? When you want to, like if, if need be and you need to, to make these decisions out of necessity, it's going to be a lot harder. I think that you always, I, I mean, I guess that's what finance does to you. It really gets you into game theory and just playing out the long run. So what else? Let's take a look, cl close look at silver this morning. And then you could see, uh, just like gold is knocking into that resistance, silver's working on 2530. And I think above 2530, that opens up the play on silver. I would be interested from a trader standpoint more in silver than on gold. So let's look at what that looks like for us on gold and silver. Let's look what that looks like. So I don't, I can't, I don't see much of an edge looking at gold versus silver over here uh, at all. It's kind of got me and look, they're, they're going nowhere for months. But I told you, you don't, maybe you didn't believe me that it's just not the trade right now. And if, if you think gold is the trade right now, then I, th I think that you're missing it. But anyway, silver looks slightly better, but both of them kind of not, right? So what else? We got um, Cardano pumping a little bit today against Bitcoin. That's nice to see. Here it is. And Brandon was very astute on the fact and the reasoning on why you should be focused on all coins versus Bitcoin at this point in the cycle. Let's move over to FX a little bit. Before we do, let's check over down on Kips's metals over here. Nickel unchanged on the day. Again, just where it was yesterday when we were talking about it, it was set up very nicely over here. It didn't make a higher high yet. It could this session right over here. That's on that 12 hour. And you probably, there you go. On the eight hour, you have an entry right there. And I like to follow this on the three day only to, sh to signal the fact that this is a long term trade over here. It's got, I, I think if I could go back, if I could go back to my 20 year old self and the one piece of advice I could give myself when it, when it comes to the markets would be to hold on for longer to hold on for longer. I don't know what it is where, uh, you know, young young traders, investors feel that like the shorter the time preference, the better. Uh, again, I used to hang out on the three minute E-mini futures for many years. The amount of screen time and experience I have on price is absolutely mind boggling. But at the end of the day, I wish I would have done it different. Let's look over here. We got platinum, it's rocketing. This was, and I, and you all remember, I said I never got in down over here, right? Uh, I don't trade it. I wish I did. Uh, but I, I'm just looking at it from the beauty of, the, of this beautiful over here, this beautiful uh, downward sloping channel over here with a big breath. There was something else that looked exactly like this yesterday. I forgot what it was. Uh, maybe we'll come back to it during this session. But beautiful breakout, then the retest and the resumption up, first entry possibly being right there. Then we checked that channel, another consolidation, broke out, retest, resumption up again, making new swing highs. Is it, is it got resistance right there? Let's check it out on the three day really quick, right? Wow, it looks like it's getting ready for a whole new leg up over here. We could be targeting somewhere around 1176. All of those riding the platinum trade. Another one of my close friends uh, has been in this trade now for a couple of years. And it continues. It continues. Again, if I'm in the metals, I don't think you should be. The copper also giving a nice entry here this morning. It's not something that you're looking to sell at this point in the cycle. I think the precious metals have still quite a long time and run ahead of them. Um... Let's get into FX, see what's going on there. 
we got some some alpha flow waves this morning. I'm, I'm without the matcha. Nevertheless, we'll be back on the matcha kick soon, looking for those waves to tighten out. We got 1,200 people in there. I do appreciate everyone for being over here and definitely smashing that like button. It really does help support myself and the channel a lot for whatever reason. Google algorithm loves it and I'm grateful for it. So thank you. What's going on? GBTC. I, I think we need to talk about GBTC really quick before we move on. Uh, and the only reason I, the only thing I want to say about that is yes, I own GBTC. I own it uh, in inside of a retirement account. It is a play on Bitcoin. I don't follow the chart of GBTC because if you look at the chart, you're seeing price affected by the premium, which is variable. I don't know that the premium is going gonna, is gonna to actually skyrocket in this bull market or, or at the height of this bull market as it did in the last because I don't really understand how the premium is calculated. It's kind of like options. I've never traded one in my life because I don't understand them enough that I want to put money behind it. Um, so anyway, GBTC, I use it, just track the price of Bitcoin. And as it's time to exit Bitcoin, you know, then you, you trade around GBTC that way, in my opinion. Apple, we were tracking it right down over here. We said that looked like the buy entry, right? Now we're towards the top over here, breaking out to the upside. Looks very healthy, by the way. What about Amazon? Again, also trying to break out a resumption off over here off Amazon. That would actually signal another entry, a new entry on Amazon. So the individuals, right? Like we said, follow what's going on in the indexes and then get into the individuals. And you can see as the NASDAQ has broken out of its consolidation, it's bringing everything else with it now. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, mar the, the market determines the premium. Um, Maybe. I mean, does, doesn't that grayscale also determine the premium? I mean, I don't understand how that works, to be honest. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look around the FX markets. Let's see what's going on. Let's start over here. Let's let's look at the euro US dollar. A lot of you are riding that trade. I Wow. That's all I can say. We talked about in yesterday's live stream what I should have been watching over here, right? And now we've broken above a, a lot of things breaking to the upside of possible patterns that could have gone either way. So what's happening now that the euro is sailing? The euro and dollar are back in play now that we've exited this whole consolidation, right? By the way, that was a big consolidation period. Usually the longer the consolidation, the bigger the move on the expansion that follows afterwards. Watch what's going on over here right now. Uh, I'll keep, I mean, obviously I do not ever chase something so overbought. That is almost vertical. Pay attention to that. All right. We'll keep coming back though. Let's check out what's going on here on the Australian dollar, Japanese yen, right? Also, right, this is, FX is, you know, it's starting to swing alive this week, right? Starting to swing alive. Finally, this trade paying off over here. Got to have that patience. Not only that, let's see. What kind of resistance did it run into over here? Is it big? Let me just pull back a second. Nope, not at all. You could see it coming in from down over here. There's a little bit of noise. It's a light level. The bigger level over there is 7850. I'm going to keep going over there. Um, let me do a quick rundown of Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. It's a good thing I did. Is it breaking out above this resistance over here? Is it breaking out to a new leg up? Ah, it's still like, it's still a little fuzzy over in that area. Australian dollar, Swiss franc, Australian dollar, Swiss franc. It looks like it found support over here, rising up now back towards the top of the channel. For whatever beating the Australian dollar was taken uh, earlier in the week, it seems now to be uh, settling in a little bit. Interesting. Uh, just making an observation yet, trying to get a feel. And the Australian dollar, Japanese yen, so far paying off well. Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. You are now coming back into an area. This is a downtrend, pulling back into an area of resistance. Is this something here you're looking for a possible short now? 
if we hold get held up in this area right now in resistance. Uh, not for me, but something that possibly is there for other people. Australian dollar, US dollar, okay, finally taking off, making new highs, taking out the August swing high over there. Looks very healthy now. Anything in your face? Obviously, the euro outperforming, right, than the Australian dollar. But uh, looks like we've bro- if I extend this trend line, we're, we've broken above it right now. Let me just do that to see what that looks like. Just trying to get a feel. Yeah, breaking above it, healthy. That could offer an opportunity here uh, as support now that we're trading above it, but not the prettiest in the bunch. Uh, Canadian dollar, Japanese yen, looks mildly interesting over here, right? Pulling back over here. This looks mildly interesting. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah, so... I, I try not to look at exotics, right? Oh. Let's take a look though for you, you ready? Um, what are we seeing over here? I am seeing I don't know what I'm seeing over here, right? Um, you know, it's hard to say whether or not, you know, there's too much support down over here. You know, let me go ahead and just draw it in of where it should be right over there. There's too much support right where you are right now that I would not want to be looking to sell this area right now at all. Uh, You're looking at a three day, which is giving you a lot of time over here. Look, I, I don't see it. It doesn't, this is even just looking at the last five years and that is just really not an attractive market whatsoever. Anyway, any way that I look at it, trying to make it work, uh, it just looks like to me that you are trading way oversold into support. I don't see it. I don't see any edge whatsoever. I'd be very careful. That's all I could say about that. I'd be very careful. Don't chase momentum. Do not chase momentum. You know, um, let's get back. Look, the reason why I, I stick with the majors is because that's where the easier money is made. There's nothing easy about the markets, but the the market you trade, the time frame you trade it, the time of day you trade it, when you take entries, all of these things are are like little layers of edges that you can give yourself. You don't want to take one away in my opinion, right? So, you know, I would stay away from the exotics. I would stay away. You want to go with where clarity is, right? Not be inviting any type of um, anything that's going to make, th- you know, something that's already extraordinarily difficult, more difficult. You know, this is support over here on the on the Swiss franc Japanese yen, right? So... I wouldn't be looking to trade that market either right now. Uh, Euro, Australian dollar. It's interesting because the Euro seems to be a lot stronger than the Australian dollar today, but they're basically unchanged in the midpoint, direct no man's land of this blue box, this range that we've been in for quite a while. I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't know. I trade it in a retirement account in a Roth IRA. I don't have any tax issues whatsoever. I, I'm not the tax man to answer for that. I could take a, a a look at charts over here and provide some some good, strong, unbiased analysis that hopefully helps you in your own. Either to be like, okay, wow, oh look, I see. And if you learn anything new in any session, please go ahead and smash the like button. If anything clicks for you and you see things clearer please go ahead, smash that like button. It really does help the channel. Grateful for it. A pound Japanese yen riding up this trend line still, but I don't see it, right? Are we coming back right now into an area of broken resistance as support? Yes, right? If that holds over there, that's pretty clean for sure. It's pretty clean. Uh, Pound is the strongest currency today. The first thing I did was see that the dollar was down so much. 
I looked at the pound to see if it had been repriced because of the ongoing situation with Brexit and the volatility, but not so much. I don't really know what to read into that. Um, but, you know, careful with the pound. But yeah, you're above some broken resistance over here. Looking to try to firm that and support a resumption off of that looks pretty nice. Um, what else is going on on the pound? Let's check out some other pairs. Pound New Zealand dollar into some nice resistance in a strong downtrend. That's a place perhaps to look for a resumption off there. Pound Australian dollar, still no man's land, right? Pound Canadian dollar. That's tough. That's tough and noisy right now. I think it's time to move this line up. So I'm going to move this line up here towards the outer end, right? And if we get a break above that, we could, I could try another poke at it to the upside. But that 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 was tough, all right? So I'm going to just clear that noise out. I don't use exact lines because I don't. I think it's the wrong way to do it. I make broad strokes over here. I see clearly the idea of what's happening. And then as it's time to get for entry, I could get down more exact and look at what's going on. Tom, great morning to you. Glad to see you over here. So what else we got going on? Um, we wanted to check out Monero. Monero leading and now lagging, right? But look at this. Just put like, this is what Monero is doing over there. And, you know, in, in my opinion, it's not just with Monero. It's almost like it's almost like throwing darts, right? You, you're gonna hit something when it comes to alt alts. I sincerely think you're much better off instead of trying to pick a favorite, falling in love with that favorite, and then probably holding on to that favorite. You know, uh, being much more emotionally tied to the project than you should is really just trading a basket of alts if you're interested in alts. Because you know, anyway, I guess there's some type of like emotional pull towards wanting to pick a project and falling in love with that project, like an individual stock. I don't think it's the way to do it. I think you're better off with a basket of alts uh, and that's that's it. But right now, uh, in, in my opinion, the trade, right, is Ethereum Bitcoin and it's breaking out here to the upside. The reason being is understanding what Bitcoin does at this point in the cycle, right? Bitcoin trading, and then you want to be getting earning more Bitcoin. Ethereum at this point in the cycle is really when it starts making its run. I believe it's going to happen again. The chart over here is saying it is a buy. Just watch your levels. Let's see. All right. Would I buy my first Bitcoin right now? You don't need to buy a whole Bitcoin. You could just buy a fraction of a Bitcoin. And if you don't own Bitcoin by now, you know, I don't know. What are you waiting for? Are, are you waiting for it to, to, what, are, what are you waiting for? You know, um, let's see. I got a little distracted. Let me get back into it. Let me, let me get, I got a little distracted. Let's get back into it. Let's find out what's going on. S and P unchanged so far. NASDAQ slightly up, right? Dollar taking another beating down today. All right. Gold and silver with that weak dollar, kind of non-existent, right? Not really doing much today as they're into that little bit of a resistance. Is that a sign to pay attention to? Kips is always talking about the wisdom of when the dollar is, is, is strong, you know, pay attention to, to what is uh, holding up the best and vice versa. Here, as you see the weak dollar, notice gold and silver are really not, really not acting uh, so well against that. That's interesting observation to make. And it is a game of observations, right? Let's check out what's going on with New Zealand dollar over here. This looks actually interesting for me coming back down after the pushing up above that 73.34 uh, cent area. Now coming back into it. That looks good and healthy. That looks good and healthy. Um, interesting observation on my from my side is that it's, it's an interesting observation from my side is that I find it odd the markets are not showing any concern about uh, 
uh, about it being December, early December right now. And we still really don't know who the, the winner of the election is. There seems to be a, a lot of moving, moving pieces. And it doesn't seem that the market doesn't care. Now, maybe the market knows something that we don't know uh, and is not worried about it. Yeah, we looked at Euro US dollar, right? Um, you could go back and check it out. Uh, we'll get to the US dollar, Canadian dollar when we get to it in just a little bit. But interesting observation is that the markets are not really pricing in any type of risk whatsoever, right? So that's what the markets are paying attention to. I want to know more about what, who won the election? Have they picked a winner? Has the elector? You guys know how the election works, right? You, you like the media doesn't pick the winner. You, everyone realizes that. Oh, got. Oh, so yeah. So in the United States of America, the media doesn't actually pick the winner, and there is no office of the uh, you know, elected, whatever that. Not, there, there. We don't know who won, right? Uh, really. Well, we'll see what happens. Don't be, uh, listen, don't be in a shock if the, uh, you know, that's not how the constitution is set up. So we'll see what happens. Just the warning from my side and my vantage point, someone who seems to get it right pretty often. So, you know, let's see what's going on. I'm, it's something that, and the reason I'm bringing it up to all of you is simply because I'm, I'm waiting and watching if it's something, because there's no such thing as efficient markets, right? It should be inefficient market theory. The markets are obviously not efficient. That's why there's always opportunity to make money in them, right? Uh, and one of the things that I'm worried for or watching out that this euphoria that we're in right now, because the markets are in a state of euphoria as the economy is simply melting down. You see all the people, you see the food lines, and that looks like as they're, the LA is just going down into full lockdown mode right now, all those people who make a living in the food industry, which is a lot of Americans, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? Oh, free money stimulus? Oh yeah, let's sell out the next generation. Sure, we could do that, no problem. Let's see what happens. Um, so anyway, I, I find it funny as we're seeing uh, lots of moving pieces over here that right now all is the market is seems to be focusing on is is the market seems to think that we're looking at further stimulus and it's going to be a lot bigger than the plan voted plan voted by the republicans for that 470 billion dollars so anyway there's no need to get into the whole election thing just understand how the election process works understand uh, the Constitution and understand that there is no winner of the presidential election yet. I mean, that's as clear as day. Are, are they still showing the electoral map on CNN? And if if so, why? If there's a winner, you know, um, I don't think that. So that's a great question, by the way. Let's let's move into here and then get back into the markets. And the question is, is, you know, what happens if there's a liquidity crisis? First of all, there are zero signs of any liquidity crisis. Going into the last one, there were lots of signs of that. Back in September of 2019, we started having problems in the repo market, right? And then that just, uh, that accumulated over here in February. You know, COVID was the pin. It had nothing to do with COVID. If it wasn't COVID, it was something else. The markets were broken over here. The Fed was trying to stop by the end of January, by, by the beginning of January, the repo action. They couldn't, they weren't able to, we had a liquidity crisis and it caused a massive dump. If that happened, when that happens again, I think it'll happen again. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Yeah. There's no question. Not only Bitcoin, everything else will feel it. I have, I don't think that we'll see another 60% correction during a liquidity crisis, right? There are, there are multiple reasons why, including the fact that if you look at gold in 2008, the last crisis, that was off 30%, this one 15%. I think that if there is any type of liquidity crisis, Bitcoin, they're going to have to come in and do what the only thing they can do, and that's just print a massive amount of money. And Bitcoin is going to be the first to recover again if and when that happens. I don't really see that right now. I don't see that as a... Um, 
as something that's you know that we need to be concerned or watching for. That's uh, and, and 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 you know it's human nature, trade traders' nature. We're always looking for that like adverse risk. Is a reason why a whole segment of uh, investors are always looking for the stock market to crash, right? You know, and if they would just kind of flip that around and always be looking for them to go up, and then when they get when they are crashing, get neutral. That you got think about the amount of success they would have. You know, that guy Sven for what is it, North Trump trader or something like. That. If that guy was a perma bull. It would be so filthy rich. It would be ridiculous. And I would love to watch his analysis on the upside as well. So, yeah. Yeah, I've been seeing that. that fu- so, uh, by the way, who was it? Was it the EU that came out and said they don't like, uh, they don't like, head, they don't like, is there a inverse head and shoulders on Bitcoin? Um. Look, I don't, and, and I don't think you should look for head and shoulders either. I don't look for head and shoulders. I think you're much better off just following the trend lines. You have a much, much better time. Is that a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder? You know, if it was the neckline, something like that, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't purposely look for them, but just follow the neckline, the trend lines, which we do use at all. All right. Let's see what else is going on over here. Let me blow through what I missed on FX. Let me start over here on the euro pairs. Euro Australian dollar dead center over here, right? This looks interesting. This is the euro Canadian dollar and this is opening up way more upside like this. This is going to get yellow lighted actually. Keep watching this now in this area. Um, here was that trend line we were watching the breakout, never an entry to the upside. It happens. It's not often that you see it happen where you get a breakout without an opportunity of a retest before the resumption up. It does happen from time to time. <laughs> I appreciate that you take the time to read what I say in the chat sometimes, although never expect when I type it, you're the best. Look, I look, I love to read the comments because I love to know what's going on with all of you. It's one of my best insights into the markets, but at the same time, I can't I can't read the comments as I'm going over the charts. So that's why I love our Friday sessions as well, when you know the work has been done and we could sit back and kind of relax a little bit. I'm just looking to see what is interesting. What about this now? The Euro British pound. Look how it traded all the way into the resistance. Backing off here, mm, not for me. Does anyone have a read on that that they like? Not for me. Thanks, James. I appreciate that very much. See, I, 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 I man, I thought it had something to do with the, the way that we look at the charts. I, I hope so. But uh, anyway, Euro. Japanese yen. Wow, the yen is just getting wrecked. You're into to some strong resistance over there. There's nothing in play at all. Euro New Zealand dollar. This looks like it is in, towards a bit of a resistance here in a strong downtrend over there. That's interesting to watch, right? Um, if we able to take out this resistance, or should say, when do you start looking at the long side over here? Let me pull back on this chart, right? Is that in an uptrend or a downtrend? I would say that chart is trending up and it's making a whole bunch of series of lower, of higher lows, right? Uh, and it's, you know, starting down left and ending higher on the right. And obviously from my perspective, we actually tracked that right over there as it broke down over there. I could be selling that into resistance. When would I start looking for this to move to the upside? Let me put up the true trend over here. Let me get an aid, right? You could see as I see my eyes were just focused on if we took out that area of resistance, would it be time to start looking to the upside? And then I see the true trend would also be going ahead and changing at that point. It's interesting over here. I'm going to keep, keep tracking this one over here. See if something develops. So one thing's for sure. Don't ever like, don't ever follow a trade just because it looks trade, 
because it looks good or th I think it looks good over here, right? So as far as what are interesting levels to be targeting on, on uh, Ethereum Bitcoin, first of all, like you have to understand what you're doing with your stop loss, right? Your stop losses could be in one of two places, right? Over here, right over there below this last couple of days, if price were after breaking out to the upside, trade back down there, I wouldn't think that something is correct. I would have to say something's off. And in this case where I generally don't use stop losses that are too tight, I would probably be leaning towards a tight stop loss here only because if we do top out over here, always worried about my risk. And when I say if we do top out, if we do top out over here, come back down testing 1680 and or possibly below, at that point, you're going to see uh, Bitcoin, uh, I think, outperforming Ethereum. It's on the way up. Ethereum is going to is going to do better at this point in the cycle. I would have a tight stop loss over here, right? The other option would be having a stop a stop loss down below this area over here. Uh, it's a little too far away for me, uh, and and only because I'd rather get out here and then if we come down lower, look off the support to get back in. So that's when you're asking what are important levels. You might have been talking about take profits, but if you're asking about what are some important levels. That is the number one most important level you should be focused in on, right? Now, as far as on the upside on what you're going to be targeting over here, look, I think that uh, I wouldn't be targeting over here the, you know, the, the August high, I'd be looking to break above that during this cycle, right? So, you know, that would just be the first area, first milestone I'd be looking to achieve, but I would be looking to take uh, more or less a position trade over here with a swing trade entry if you were able to get into it. Jordan, how when long on a swing trade you determine, yeah, you want to take the course for that. Uh, you definitely want to go over the, the live tr uh, training sessions where we talk about trade management, Dylan. Uh, and if you're already in the course, then send me an email and I, I will help you point you in the in the direction of where those videos are to help you with that. So let me go back over here. <laughs> Kips, simmer down. What's going on? <laughs> US dollar, Canadian dollar. Let's check it out. You know, oh, the US dollar, Canadian dollar coming down into an area of interest over here. Wow. Let's check it out, right? This is a big area of interest. What do we what do we make of this? I don't know what I make of this. Does anyone feel like going long on the dollar right now, right? Uh, you know, are, are we done talking about the dollar bulls and the and the milkshakes? You know, who is who's long the dollar here? Are we looking for a reversal again? I don't know, right? I don't think I would want to lean into the, the U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar to the U.S. dollar side here, even at this nice bit of trend line support. You could see over there, this, is, this was, again, so many good trades this year that it's ridiculous. And this was one of them. When we broke this trend line to the upside, the U.S. The US dollar, Canadian dollar, I, my, I myself and lots of us were in that trade. Now, I didn't expect it to carry on as far as it did. But the amount of time it took to meet our profit profit uh, objectives were very quick. 2020 is one of the all-time great years. Uh, look, what happens now breaking down below this, right? That's the question. Do you think we're going to hold here? It's still possible. I think it's it's it looks like this is going to be the time that we break, though. And then what are we targeting, you know? Uh, is this the pair that you want to be involved in over here, the U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar? Um I don't think so, right? I think the euro, the pound, the New Zealand dollar, the Australian dollar before the Canadian dollar, right? And nevertheless, you got to watch what's going on over there. Um, we could see a quick move down into this support over here down at $1.28. Speaking of New Zealand dollar, US dot, see, that looks a lot more healthy t in my opinion. Um Breaking, breaking, breaking levels everywhere. K 
Tips, you never got back to me whether or not we're going to do, you know, passing the mic one day. Friday session would be a great time to try and start that. You would love to hear what's going on in your head as well. Look, Eduardo, there's so many good trading platforms and options. Depending on where you're in the world, you should be able to do some research. You could check in the comments, you know, if you were uncertain about whether or not anyone had, uh, you know, like, listen, stay away. But that's not really the case. There are so many good options for brokers. If you're trading FX, do check out Oanda. Good one for sure. Um but there are so many good uh, places uh, for trading uh, for trading crypto. You have uh, like Binance. Those in the U.S. are using Coinbase Pro. There's lots of options, lots of different good options. Just trying to see what else is going on over here. If anything catches my eye that we really want to focus in on. New Zealand dollar uh, Swift Frank actually down into the bottom off the support over here. The risk to reward just coming back into the next area of resistance is good. You could know where you're wrong. Can you imagine we saw some risk off into the market and that broke down? That could be a waterfall to the downside. Mexican peso. What's going on over here? I see lots of noise. I don't like that. Let me clean that up just so I could. Oh boy, that looks too too messy, too noisy. But I see the the pound U.S. dollar pound is strong today, but pound is towards the area of resistance over here. Warning: Be careful. Watch out on the break of that though. That sets up much further outside. That would be a big event. Look at this, everyone, on the pound U.S. dollar. Look at the look at the break of that trend line could set up a big event over here. Come down with me to the eight hour, right? That that looks interesting. I would say uh, FX is alive, you know. Some easy, some not. Yeah, David, that's in play. Let's go back the pound US dollar. That's all that's also in play right over here. Nice. Nice. Uh Tesla and then the US dollar Mexican peso. Again, Tesla is just for me like warning signs at this point. If you are if I if I had a Tesla position, right? And since this circle over here, that's when Tesla has been avoided, right? And even everyone like it was just we were still, we were only here, you know, somewhere in the 400s. And I was like, look, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla hit 600. But as it's as it's uh, entered into the S and P 500, that's the interim top. I that I stay I stick with that unless we see. Uh, we were looking this morning. Alling was showing us the S and P 500, the possibility of breaking out above that resistance. That could be a big leg in the markets if we're seeing all of a sudden that it's going to be by the end of January, early February, we're going to see substantial stimulus. There's no question that Tesla could break the model this time. And instead of putting it in term chop, could keep going higher. Look, it, it, instead of looking for when the bubble pops, wait for it to pop. But right now we're in a big bubble, right? Been saying all of 2020, the Fed is printing money. You know, QE is asset inflationary. You get this whole big debate about deflationary versus inflationary and blah. And instead, it, you know, it kept everyone on the wrong side of the trade. And that's for sure. Jordan, could you show the actual time somewhere on your screen? Some of us have to watch a bit delayed and it would be easier to correlate the incoming data. Let me see what's going on with you. You, Neil is saying, you know, you mentioned earlier, but really interested in your thoughts on the dollar breaking down to multi-year lows and especially silvers getting smashed down. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what to make of that. That's the observation I was making earlier. I'm seeing the dollar off substantially. 
And then I'm seeing gold and silver not really making too much moves. Now, their moves did happen earlier in the week, and they were big moves. And the fact that they're consolidating, that's all positive. And that is like, you could look at silver trading down over here. And for me, that's just consolidating, you know? Um, the only thing I can say is, is in my opinion, that this is not the, the time to be trading gold and silver, you know? But everyone else knows why. Euro, New Zealand dollar. Oh, we didn't look at the at the peso. Someone wanted to look at the peso. And look, all I could say is I've met my pro profit objectives. You know, I would, would I be surprised? Yeah. You know, is it possible? Yeah. It's a big carry trade, you know. But uh, anyway, you, the dollar is, is really uh, into some really important levels here on the U.S. dollar, Mexican peso and on the U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar. And, you know, again, we just saw the dollar is on the verge of breaking down to two year lows. So it's all being priced in appropriately. So is now the time for silver? I mean, I don't know. Listen, you know, if 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 I if you understand the, the you know, if you understand right now the Bitcoin trade, I don't understand. I, I can't. It's hard to make. Is this the time for silver right now? You know? And it's not the time for silver for a swing trader perspective. Not yet. It could be soon, right? If silver is able to take out 2430 and flip that into support, that could open up a nice swing trade uh, for silver. Finally, take out the 26 resistance. And then at that point, we could see a substantial move on, on silver, you know. I mean, those those markets are definitely suppressed. Thank you, Josh. That's awesome, Josh. That's that's a a good piece of 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 uh, feedback. To it makes me happy. I'm grateful for that. That's awesome. We got about an hour into the session. Tomorrow we have right after tomorrow Friday, right after the the live session, we're going to be doing a conquering the markets training session. Um, do. You, Look, I love this. This is just my favorite. And did you admit you were wrong about the 30, 35% pullback on Bitcoin? Well, I never said anything about a 35% pullback, you know? So I don't know what you're talking about when you say things like that. I love how a whole segment of the population forms questions, right? They're, they're always leading questions. But no, I never said anything about a 35% pullback, right? Uh, have I admitted I was wrong? Man, I don't know where have you been all week, but every every time I've spoken to uh, our community, to our audience, I have said that. <laughs> so, ML, <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? Seriously, what are you talking about? I, I don't even know where to go with that. Yeah, every time I've spoken to the audience uh, all week, I've talked about the fact that since the halving, we've had three pullbacks. Two of them have been 20%. Another has been 16.5%. Obviously, I have to reconsider of how far I think the pullbacks will be going forward. And I still do think that we will have a 30% pullback. But either which way, man, man, anyway. Oh boy. Oh, so <laughs> it, that's okay. But ML, this doesn't matter. You know, it's not like you should catch every episode or anything like that, right? But but like the way you phrase it is is like, what are you trying to get me? <laughs> Come on, brother. Right? What are you, I've, I, look, the, the only thing I could say that I that is fair to say is that. You know, I'm only about transparency. I have nothing to prove to anyone whatsoever. And the last thing I'm trying to do is prove that I'm right. I'm only trying to prove what the markets are showing me. That's all the only thing I want to know. Point in being is when I brought up the whole situation that is, is going around the election. In my opinion, it's kind of difficult to understand why the market is not like concerned about any of it. But the market's not concerned about any of it, right? I don't. It doesn't matter what I want to happen. It only matters what is happening at the end of the day, and that's all. Um, but yeah, 
for several times I've I've spoken about that fact after this. And by the way, over on the on Sunday on Twitter on Saturday night and Sunday, I kept updating everyone what was going on with this trade right here. Uh, you know, because I had taken a little bit of profit off at eighteen thousand nine hundred and thirty-two on the way up, right? Uh, and then I had to go ahead and re re put on those trades three hundred dollars higher back at nineteen thousand two hundred. But I have to say, and just so you all know, a trade doesn't have to work out for it to be masterful. Right, because I don't even want to talk about my own. I don't want to talk about it, but I was able to put on like a small option hedge over here for my whole stack. So it had gone fifteen percent. It was enormously into profit, but I was looking for it to go this far into profit. That would have been a home run had that happened. Instead, it didn't, and that's that's what it is. So. That, I mean, we would love to see a presentation, though, Kips. It's something that I could help do with you if you don't want to actually do the presentation yourself, though. Uh, and, you know, if, if you want to pass me the info, I'd be happy, happy to present it. That's a good one to go, for, you know, for a lot of people. Yeah, so um, I think we're going to call it a short session today. No, it's not. It wasn't an option. I, I don't mean. To, so I'm sorry. It was not an option. It was similar to an option in that it was just a, a small in value but highly leveraged position. This is really no different than an option, but it wasn't done as an option. It was done as a futures, and that's where I started in the futures, and it will always be there, right? So I'm 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 all about Bitcoin. No, no. I, I my trade is on Bitcoin. My trade is on Bitcoin. I'm not making an allocation to Altiverse Bitcoin. My trade is on Bitcoin. I've really tried to be very clear about why that is and why I think it's the best trade. That's not to say that I don't think right now that alts are going to outperform Bitcoin. I do. I think alts are going to outperform Bitcoin at this point in the cycle. And I think that if you're looking to gain Bitcoin, trading things like Ethereum versus Bitcoin right now, could offer possibly that opportunity. Be careful in anything you do. Do not take a trade because I think something looks interesting. Take a trade because you understand it. You know where your risk is. You know where your levels are and then manage it accordingly, right? So, oh yeah, it's conquertrades.com. There's actually... There's actually uh, b below in the description uh, a link to that, but it is conquertrades.com. Also, speaking of Heath and Trade Talk, Brandon and Heath's channels are in the description today below. They are watch the content they're putting out. They're they're two that I consider very close, right in my, in my in my circle here, and um, you know I'm 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 proud to uh, whatever I could offer have offered into forming themselves. But these are two traders that are, are offering their time and knowledge as well. And you should definitely be following what they're doing. If you don't know the target for Bitcoin, please check out the playlist. You're going to have, you know, check out the playlist. And it is, I believe, some of the best work on Bitcoin regarding the four-year cycle that there is out there. And uh, look, you just want to pay attention to those who have been on the right side of the trade and getting it right. When was the chart with the alts? This is the, it's called Bitwise. If you just Google or don't Google, DuckDuckGo or something else, Bitwise uh, top 20. That will pull up the link. All right, that will pull up the link. Uh, as far as the course, the, 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 the more experience you have, there are a lot of traders, 15 plus years experience. And then they have all of this treasure of wealth and, and, and information that as long as they're able to say, all right, you know, I need to stop doing it my way and listen to what's being presented. It is a huge, a lot of people in 15 years, never profitable, take the course, work with me and are now profitable. That's for real. And then there are people who have never traded before in their life. Brad, big shout out, is one of them. He built the website after taking the course, you know, web developer took the course and you, whether you have no experience or experience, it's a great place to be.
So there you go. Brandon and, and, and Heath, both really good. There you go. Sends right. You have to you have to have that predator mindset. You have to have that predator mindset. So, all right, everyone. We're going to go out with some music right now. Let me go ahead and cue the music. That's beautiful, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Alan, so much for appreciating that. And that's it's, it's, it's one of the things about what we do here every day, right? We're, we're following the markets. So it's whatever lessons the markets have for us that are, are presented. And it's different gems every day, depending on what is unfolding. Thanks for being here with me to go through this together. Uh, look, I'm, I just consider myself a student of the markets. I'm not looking to impose my will on the market. I'm looking to learn from them every day to be able to, to share in that journey and share that uh, with you is a, is a great pleasure. So thank you all for that. It's a series of modules that you do in your own pace at your own time, Nathan. And then also we have live training sessions, which you can be a part of or watch the replay. you get uh, Keith's, Keith's channel right there in the description. Tom, have a beautiful day. Thanks, Blair. Appreciate that, brother. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. That's my opinion. Let me. Thanks, brother. We nailed that. Turn an oil, didn't we? Hey, that's awesome. Welcome. I'm glad you're here and part of this beautiful, beautiful place. That's awesome, Jay, Jay Bird. Ah, uh, I don't have it with me right now, Nathan. Uh, if you wait until Monday, I will, I will get a photo of that for you. <laughs> yeah, the matcha train's a good one. I'll, I'll, I'll take a photo of that next week. Thank you, Andreas. Amen. Cameron, Wes, thank you guys for stepping in here, helping the community. Really grateful for, for that. Really, really appreciate that. You guys are great. Thank you, Wes. Thank you, Cameron, for jumping in here and helping out. Everyone, have a beautiful, beautiful day. I will talk to you this afternoon, and I'll see you in the morning.